Okay then. First, I would like to ask Dr. Lindsay Curtis to start the festivities with an invocation. Could you come on up here? I just need to share with you, I just got back from Chicago and I'm a tremendous um, Chicago Bear fan. And so I certainly needed some festivities to bring me back up. <laughs> but I do want to say to all here, what a wonderful venture this is. Um, I am absolutely in awe that you would even um, want to start your festivities with an invocation. So therefore, I do ask that you would join me. Father in heaven, we thank you again for, yes, the gift of life. We thank you for the energy that you've given us. We thank you for the heart of these who have built this wonderful facility. For you remind us that when you've done unto the least of these, you have done it unto me. We thank you, O oh God. We ask you to bind blessings not only on these festivities, but we ask your blessing upon this building and each and every one of its residents that you would continue to shelter them, that you would continue to care for them, that you would give them the energies to go out and to be the best that they can be. We ask these blessings upon those who have led this effort, and in that name that stands above every name, we say amen. amen. Curtis. Now it's my pleasure to turn the meeting over to Ross Burkhardt, who is the President and CEO of NII. Um, I, uh, I am uh, very fond of an old Beatles song called The Long and Winding Road. And, <laughs> and actually, I think uh, some of the history and how this whole project uh, uh, came to be was a long and winding road. I'm not going to go through the whole history, but it, start, it started back in 2004, 2005 with the Human Resources Council with a plan and uh, you, uh, uh, the Redevelopment Agency and other people got involved and then finally the Keeners uh, came in and uh, played an important role of getting this started, getting the plant site approved. And then finally we came along with a with Chaffa and other people with a, uh, a proposal and plan to finance the deal, and it still took a little while to get that uh, done, longer than I think the Keeners wanted. But the winding road does lead to the heart of the matter, and the heart of the matter really is, if you don't mind me being a little uh, corny here, is really the tenants that are living here, and it makes it all worthwhile and uh, representing the tenants who are starting the program with uh, J uh, Jasmine Hardy, Hardy, who is a tenant here since August, and she has a few remarks that she would like to make. Hello. My name is Jasmine Hardy. I'm a resident here at 80 Fair Street. Um, I just want to say thank you for everyone for inviting me here to your ring cutting ceremony. On behalf of the residents here at 80 Fair Street, we would like to welcome you. Um, I just want to tell you a little bit about here and the residents. Um, 80 Fair Street here is just not where a place where we live. It's a place that we do call home. All of you who have built the place that we do call home is a foundation here for all of us to grow as residents. In the time that I've lived here, I've met exceptional neighbors and the staff here are one of a kind. With great help from Joanne, myself, and other residents, We've started a food pantry and a clothing closet for all the residents here who need it. Joanne has also helped put together events such as Christmas parties and meet and greets for all of the residents here who are not from here that don't have family. We are their second family. These events have built deep bonds and new friendships among the neighbors and staff. We've become a family here at 80 Fair Street. With me being a single parent, I've learned that it doesn't take just the family to raise a child, but it takes the help of a community. All of the residents here have been encouraging and very helpful to my daughter and I. 80 Fair Street is a new development that has built quickly, quickly with new families from all over, people with deep caring hearts and people who are hardworking and strive to make our community better and close knit. The staff have become close friends and very close to all of our hearts. After coming home from a long day at work, I know when I do get home that I'll be greeted with hellos and beautiful smiles from everyone here. 
We all feel that this is a safe place thanks to the security. And when we do need a helping hand, Ricky is always here when you need him, no matter how big or small the problem is. Also, Joanne keeps things going for us, and even if you need someone to talk to, she's always there. 80 Fair Street has been built on a strong foundation with lasting hearts and people who care. Welcome. The uh, tenants are really turning out to be a really great group. Uh, the stories that I'm hearing, I can't come to all of your meetings, but I do hear a lot of great stories from Joanne and other people about what's going on. Uh, the next speaker is Richard Bonifant. He is a member of the Common Council of the uh, District A. I think District A represents uh, this area uh, from the Common Council here in, um, um, uh, in Norwalk. Mr. Bonifant, yeah. Good morning, or afternoon, I guess, by now. Uh, my first reaction when I was invited to speak, I'm going like, did he really know I'm the guy that led the charge against a tax abatement for this? for this <laughs> facility. However, I'm so glad it worked out for everybody. <laughs> now you know that cost me a few votes. But uh, I just want to say uh, congratulations on everything that got worked out here. Uh, and I want to tell you that it's a great neighborhood. You have two very good neighborhood associations. You have the um, Wilton Avenue Association over there, and they, they kind of come up to this corner and you also have a West Main Street Association and they're very active and they're good and I encourage the staff and the residents to reach out and, and um, get in touch with them because they, they will help you understand the neighborhood and I also want to mention that you have a really nice park at the other end of Fair Street it's owned by not the city it's uh, by the first district water department owns it which way that way yeah I get mixed up but the, on the other end of Fair Street you have a real nice Santanella Park over there and you have a lot of fun there run around and, and, and enjoy that and one small note that uh, at the end of Tisdale Avenue by the Subaru dealer be very careful when your friends come to visit you because not everybody's GPS says that it's a it has a barrier there and and the guys my buddies who work at the Subaru place have told me more than once somebody drives right into that barrier thinking it's a, a through street right so good luck with everything and, and, and enjoy your facility and thanks for inviting me Thanks, uh, Richard. Uh, I, uh, I wasn't sure how I was going to introduce you, but we really appreciate you coming here, and we really want you, and we hope we can bring other members of the Board of Reps out here and really be able to show people what uh, this concept of affordable housing is really all about. And uh, there are many people who are living in this uh, building who work and grew up here like Jasmine and uh, we're very proud of that also. Um, the next uh, speaker will be from Congressman Hines office, Gloria DePina. She's an old friend and colleague and we've worked with her for a long time in Stanford but she has a few remarks to uh, say for the, uh, uh, for the congressman. Thank you. Good morning everyone. I'm sorry that Congressman Hines can't be here today, but he is in the Washington office. And if he was here, he'll be really proud that New Neighborhood Housing has built this beautiful complex for the homeless and especially for the veterans. I think it's really wonderful that they have set aside five apartments for homeless veterans, and it's such a wonderful thing that they've done. And I just want to say that I'm sorry that the Congressman can't be here, but if he was here, he would really be proud of this new project. And I just want to thank you all for having us here. Thank you so much. The, uh, uh, the next speaker is Paul Keener, and uh, the Keeners played a pivotal role in making this happen. And I hope Paul talks a little bit about that, but uh, they really came in when it looked like uh, 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 there was going to be very, it's going to be, it was very difficult to actually get the project off the ground. They got the site plan approved, and they uh, built it, and we essentially purchased it from the Keeners. They're really the builders, and they're the ones that are responsible for the plan and uh, everything else that we've got here. Uh, Paul, where, oh, there you are. Okay, I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, good to see you. 
Thank you, Ross. Um, this clearly was a long and winding road and a uh, day that we were very much looking forward to and uh, well worth all the efforts by everybody in this room, outside this room. This is a true testament of never giving up. When you know the right side of a uh, situation uh, that you are behind and you have the help of many talented individuals, it's a matter of staying the course. So when the late Paul Jones called us in the summer of uh, 2006 and asked us to get involved uh, with the Redevelopment Agency and the Human Services Council, uh, we won't go into all the uh, nitty gritty, but rest assured it was a challenge that our company was up for. Uh, we felt a uh, candidly a, uh, a real calling to get involved. Uh, the city of Norwalk had been very good to our company, or good to our family with the development of the towers and the tenants that we have over there. This was an opportunity for us to focus on some workforce housing and to give back to the community. Um, I'm not sure we really had our eyes open on how challenging it might be, uh, but candidly there's few things that when you see somebody um, like Jasmine, who I just had an opportunity to meet right now, uh, it makes all the effort worthwhile. And the only thing that happened quickly here was the filling up of the building. And I think we all need to think about that uh, because it shows what a great need there are, there is in not only Norwalk, Fairfield County, in all of Connecticut. So I think we're all called, uh, when we get that call or have that inkling to get involved, uh, that we do need to get involved. Um, there's lots of people I think of and reminisce over the last uh, five years. Um, obviously, Paul Jones is one of them. Tim Sheehan um, is very helpful in the process, the mayor's office, all the departments, the councils. Uh, on it. But we always look that as everybody has a right to their opinion. Uh, there's always two sides to every story. We just knew that we had one focus in mind, which was to get to the goal line, and we were going to use everybody's help to get there. The help at the state level was phenomenal. Uh, sure, we would have liked it to happen faster, but that's just in our DNA. Um, the governor's office was very helpful. Uh, Commissioner Bannon in the CHAP office was very helpful, as was his entire team. Commissioner McDonald in the DCD office. Uh, I need to offer a special thanks to Senator Duff, who was on the Human Services uh, Council from the beginning. and. I know this is near and dear to him, and he was very helpful to us, the local chamber. Um, everybody was really behind this, which is why it ultimately got done. And then a special thanks to Ross, his team, to Trail Management for leasing it up. And last but not least, I offer my thanks and patience to the residents for waiting for us to get this done. And my last comment is welcome home. The, uh, the next speaker, Jackie Mandike, uh, unfortunately could not make it. They called me and they were at least uh, an hour and a half away when they called uh, because of the snow and the traffic conditions. So uh, she sends her regrets. But uh, the B Department of Community and Economic Development and the Connecticut Housing Finance Authority played key roles also in making this development happen. If you look at the uh, sources and use or the uh, sources of financing for the uh, the de project development in your fact sheet at the end, you will see that uh, Chaffa. Uh, came up with a combined total of about, um, uh, well, both the permanent debt and the, uh, the equity. Uh, the investor for the equity was National Equity Fund. I don't think anybody from that, oh, hi, Esther. How are you? Uh, Esther Velez from the, uh, uh, the uh, National Equity Fund is here. I didn't, I was looking around for one of you. I'm sorry. Yeah, right, yeah. <laughs> you came all the way down from Providence, Rhode Island, didn't you? Yeah, well. Uh, so they, she runs uh, the asset management office up there that uh, actually is helping, you know, is overviewing, uh, overlooking a lot of our uh, um, financing and some of the details of our uh, rent, or, uh, rent up and leases. Uh, but uh, thank you for coming. Um, and um, the, the, but the National Equity Fund bought the tax credits that were syndicated that came uh, were awarded to us by Chaffa. 
Chaffa also came up with uh, the bond financing. And I would just like to have um, Dara Cavell, who is the uh, director, uh, housing development director. I keep you getting your title. I want to call you the executive director and <laughs> uh, pr promote you. But, uh, but uh, if D uh, Dara could just speak for a few minutes about Chaffa's role here. Thank you. Thanks, Ross. Um, well, as, as you all know, Tim, Tim Bannon has gone on to bigger and better things. He's now the chief of staff for the Governor Malloy. So um, in his absence, you can call me anything you want <laughs> until, we, until we figure out the next thing. Um, good morning, everybody. Um, I, I've been now at CHFA for about a year, and so I, I only got to understand the tail end of this development. But I did, I did watch this project as it developed on the front end as a developer um, active in Fairfield County. And it's very exciting to be here and to see all the faces and to know that it now serves as home to so many families here in Norwalk. It's a very exciting moment. Um, Fair Street Apartments is a success story and a shining example of how when faced with challenges, state agencies, policymakers, private companies, and a group of committed individuals can get together and create a solution that has enormous public benefit. While this path for Fair Street may have been somewhat unusual and long and winding, as has already been alluded to, um, the lesson is that we are really, um, we're learning, th this embodies what we know about affordable housing, which is it is of high quality, it is of comparable quality or better quality than market rate housing, and that while it is very difficult and challenging and painful sometimes to get to the cutting of the ribbon, it is always worth it. And so I congratulate all of you who have been a part of that. Um, some of the unique features of Fair Street have already been enumerated. This um, property exists, obviously, in one of the most expensive housing markets in the country, in Fairfield County. Um, it offers an affordable home, not just to those with lower incomes struggling in the current economic crisis, but also to six veterans and their families who may have a disabled member, and five families who are either homeless or at risk of homelessness, which is an incredible achievement in and of itself. Uh, moments like this give us a wonderful opportunity to view housing from a variety of different perspectives. Whether your field is as an investor, a lender, a developer, a service provider, a public official, a contractor, or any other um, angle that you may approach this, um, we all have a professional and a personal interest in ensuring the affordability and availability of housing across the state of Connecticut. Um, here are some statistics from Norwalk from 2009. Uh, in, in Norwalk in 2009, 147 single adults were in shelters, 13 families were in shelters, and 37 individuals were on the streets and chronically homeless. Now that 37 number is actually a 154% increase from 2008. So um, this economic crisis has had its impact and is making it harder and harder for people to access housing and have a quality safe, uh, protected environment to live their lives and to, to do what they need to do to, to get, get themselves stable. Um, beyond the issue of homelessness, um, the uh, one-bedroom apartment in 2009 was, or 2010 was $1,440 in Norwalk, and you had to make, uh, your median income was $57,600. So, so these, are, these are pretty high numbers in, in this economic climate, and those numbers make housing out of reach for many families and households, both those who are working and those who are struggling to get back into the workforce. When housing and associated costs, such as transportation, utilities, um, are affordable, families have more income to spend on services and other local goods, which is good for our economy. Um, the location of this, uh, this uh, development is, is obviously a, a great location to have uh, housing. It makes it attractive to um, renters here, but it also is part of the state's responsible growth um, objectives of trying to create housing in places where there are already urban centers near services, near um, shopping, and other activities that, that the renters can benefit from. So this is, this is a great location, and all those things have a, have a positive impact on energy consumption, reduce our carbon impact and congestion, and all the negative health consequences associated with people spending too much time in their cars. From an employer's perspective, lack of affordable housing can put a local economy at a competitive disadvantage. So we specifically commend um, the mayor and the city council for having supported this development. 
Um, it shows a commitment both of the state of Connecticut, the local city, and business leaders to increase the opportunities for workforce housing and, and create an engine that will drive economic development here in the state and here locally. Um, our investment of, uh, and the investment of approximately $13 million created $17.6 million in economic activity and 100 new jobs in construction. Um, this is obviously very critical in a time like this when, when we need to be creating more jobs, so affordable housing is a means to that. Um, and according to the National Association of Home Builders, now that these homes are 100% occupied, there are approximately 20 ongoing jobs that support the, the <coughs> residents who live here in, in the local goods, services, and economy that um, support the residents. So I congratulate all of you on the success of a, of a very complex and uh, exciting <laughs> development. I specifically congratulate the residents for finding a home. Um, I want to, again, recognize the mayor and the city council um, and Senator Duff, as well as Representative Morris Perone and Cafaro, who I know have all sort of had some leadership role here. Um, also, uh, Joan McDonald, who is obviously going on to bigger and more challenging things. I would not want to be the head of New York's <laughs> Department of Transportation, no matter how much you offered me. Um, and also to recognize the Veterans Affairs, uh, Preston Maynard, who I think just arrived, and um, the Department of Health and Mental Addiction Services. Um, Barbara Geller was a great leader in creating support um, on the operations side and services. Mary Katernack and Paulette Barrett from um, the Department of Social Services. So these things of the, all these people coming together have made this possible. Our staff at CHFA, Nancy O'Brien, Carl Stenman, who could not be here because of the traffic, but and, and a host of others also were, were very um, dedicated and worked with, with everyone here to make this happen. So congratulations again. We look forward to being a continued part of Connecticut's growth and more success stories to come. Congratulations, Ross. Uh, you just uh, mentioned, I have a whole list of people that I was going to, was, I'm going to spare uh, repeating a lot of the names, but your staff and the staff at DECD was definitely uh, Edla Chance and uh, a number of other people at the uh, Department of Economic Community Development were instrumental. And I uh, really, um, uh, if it hadn't been for their guidance on this, we would have probably been uh, taking even longer to get the, uh, the development off uh, finally financed. Uh, the next speaker is Bruce Morris. Hi, Bruce. <laughs> and uh, I'm glad you made it. So often I've said that, um, you know, the strength of NAWAC is its diversity, and we must be deliberate about how we support that diversity. Certainly when we take a look at workforce housing and affordable housing and meet that need, when you hear in the story of uh, your new tenant, uh, so we're being deliberate. We're doing something that is important, particularly in a time when we're concerned about jobs. Um, we need to make certain that, that employers have uh, a, a viable workforce that's educated to do so, but the workforce needs to have a quality place that they can live in that is safe and is clean and that they can call home. Um, to Mr. Keener, Mr. Ross, kudos to both of you. Certainly government and everyone else did what they had to do. But, um, you know, two, two gentlemen that took some leadership um, to make this happen despite all the challenges. Thank you, kudos to you. And uh, more importantly, let's see what we can do in the city of Norwalk State, but certainly in the city of Norwalk, to continue to create more housing like this. Uh, we will have a vibrant Norwalk where everyone can thrive and we can all celebrate the diversity that we love so much. Thank you. Kudos to you. Some of the other people that are here, uh, Ed Musanti from the, uh, uh, I'm sorry, I'm, uh, yeah, right, <laughs> Chamber of Commerce, and uh, some of the other people here that are representing the city are also around. I hope you get to meet them. Um, the next speaker, however, is played a really key role, and I. Uh, he was uh, one of the original people to want to see this site develop with affordable workforce housing. And uh, I welcome Senator Bob Duff. What a great day it is to finally stand here and to uh, open formally 80 Fair Street. 
Uh, it was alluded to earlier uh, as a member of the Human Services Council, uh, as a board member, it was a dream back in 2004 uh, to redevelop this site uh, for workforce affordable housing. And obviously we know that uh, some things have happened in the, in the meantime uh, to get to this spot today. But really what started off as the mission for that agency to develop housing uh, for people who live in, and work in the area has been met. And we are very excited about that. Uh, but I have to, uh, I know there's been a lot of thank yous, uh, but this has been a, a rather a long and a strange journey uh, to get to this point. Um, but, I, but there are those who, who really deserve a lot of thanks uh, for getting us to this point today. I certainly uh, want to thank those on the Human Services Council board, Elaine uh, Anderson, uh, who was uh, CEO at the time. I uh, also uh, want to thank uh, Paul Jones, uh, who helped facilitate this when it looked like the Human Services Council was not going to be able to develop the property. I uh, have to, of course, thank uh, Paul and Carl Keener and David Waters, their attorney, uh, for really having the patience to see this through. Uh, many times we were in uh, meetings with DECD and Chaffa, uh, where it just looked like this was a, a square peg in a round hole, and we weren't really sure whether or not this was ever going to come to fruition or not. We all knew this was the right thing, uh, but we weren't sure that it was ever going to uh, get to the point where we are today. Uh, so I want to thank Paul, uh, specifically in building a land technology, uh, for stepping up to the plate. You know, they, they do, they're working on this little small project in Stanford. I don't know if anybody's heard about it at all. Um, but they never really took their eye off the ball for 80 Fair Street. When they could have gone on to bigger and better things themselves, uh, they could have moved on, uh, they stuck with it. And many times, you know, uh, I know the Keeners, uh, have, they're not always out there uh, showcasing all the things they do for the community, uh, but there's a lot of times out there where they're, they're helping out and they're not looking for that recognition. So thank you again, uh, Building Atlanta Technology. Uh, I also have to thank uh, Chaffa and Tim Bannon for his endless amount of patience, and I know he's uh, going to be a great chief of staff for the new governor based on my relationships with him already at the Capitol, and thank you so much uh, for the folks at Chaffa and DECD. Uh, did we, we use some housing trust fund money too, didn't we? Not did we? One. Not yet? Not yet. Okay. Well, well. <laughs> there's always the next project. There's always the next one. Um, but I have to thank uh, the folks at DECD because they were uh, certainly instrumental in this as well. Um, and of course, uh, our mayor, Richard Moshe, who ex exerted a lot of political capital uh, uh, trying to get us here today. So I want to thank the mayor personally for all his work on this as well. And of course, the uh, state delegation, uh, on a bipartisan basis, is not a partisan issue, but on a bipartisan basis, we all came together to support this, along with Ed Musanti and, the, and others in this community as well. Uh, so as we all know, affordable housing is critical uh, to the success of our community. It's critical uh, to how Norwalk will grow and how Norwalk will be over the next 20 or 30 years. And as we know from our new tenants, uh, they will have uh, housing that is uh, has a better quality, uh, has a better feel to it than maybe some of the other options that were out there. And maybe even, maybe even, we have taken a few cars off of I-95 in the process. <laughs> because since we have great housing here, that means that people who are looking for housing uh, that they can afford means that they don't have to go to Stratford or Shelton or Bridgeport or Trumbull or some other place and drive on those highways in the morning. So we are taking our responsibility very seriously about creating more <coughs> affordable housing. We welcome the residents, we appreciate it, and we welcome everybody here today on this most exciting project. Thank you very much. I uh, actually uh, first met the mayor when we got started with uh, uh, promoting and working on uh, financing this development. And you have been really very helpful to us. We didn't always succeed in some of the things that we wanted to do, but it was really very important to us to know that the, uh, the chief executive officer of the town was really in back of what we were trying to do. That didn't mean everybody else in town at, at times were in favor of it, but we, it helped us prevail. And I would like now to have the mayor just speak briefly also to the board. One of the difficulties in speaking last is that everything's been said. Uh, 
But again, my thanks to all the parties concerned that have been enumerated, uh, the Keeners and, and everybody involved. And doesn't Jasmine have a great smile, by the way? She is. She lights up the room. Had the opportunity to sneak in her review, and we toured. And she says, I'm here. I'm here. Uh, so, um, and to Rich Bonifant, thank you for your honesty. And Reverend Curtis is here to offer you some forgiveness. Um, <laughs> Redemption. Um, you know, it's interesting. We're talking about affordable housing and, and some of the stats that were given uh, about homelessness. And uh, coincidentally, uh, tonight um, before our council meeting, um, we will make our first draft presentation of Norwalk's 10-year plan to end homelessness, uh, which was committee. Up <laughs> yeah, go ahead. Uh, uh, committee that it was put together of of private citizens and some of the top corporate leaders in the city from Pepperidge, from GE, uh, from the Norwalk Hospital, the chief executive officer, uh, across the board of uh, housing authority, uh, and the draft uh, will be presented to the council for review and discussion about a continuum of care to ultimately, and when you say this, people think you're cruel, ultimately the goal is to shut shelters down because shelters are a symptom of the disease and we want to have a continuum of care where there are facilities where people will not be in the cold, will not be in the street, will have an opportunity for counseling for homes like this. Uh, and it is, it is something that uh, we all need. You know, the president um, has initiated a, a large fund for ending homelessness. And, and one of the prerogatives or priorities, if you want to apply for that, is to have the 10-year plan to homeless. So this is our first step, but this sort of fits in with what we've talked about affordable and workforce. And um, you know, you mentioned the Beatles and the windy road. I'm a little older. I go back to Dwayne Eddy and he had 40 miles of bad road. And uh, <laughs> there was occasionally when that road got very bumpy. Uh, uh, and um, you know, we talk about uh, political capital. Uh, there's also a word that goes after political heat too. Uh, but uh, that's part of the job and every elected official here <coughs> understands that. And certainly, uh, um, um, hopefully, more of the council people will come and have an opportunity to uh, view what has been built here um, to get rid of the stereotypes of the people that live and what type of units they live in. There's one final note. I hope you'll allow me, and all the residents here I know are wonderful people. Uh, but I do have a little bit in my heart for, and I understand there's at least five veterans that are are living in this facility, maybe a sixth. And all of us, of some form or another, have sat at, uh, stood at a parade and saluted our veterans or various events and said thank you to our veterans and whether they're currently serving currently or in the present or moved on from Afghanistan or Iraq or in other wars. We've always thanked them, we've saluted them. I can think, you know, I served for four years, but certainly not under the conditions that some of our veterans returning home now have served the trauma, the shock, uh, the, the tragedies they've seen and the horrific uh, things they've seen that can shock the sensibilities of anybody. I am just so grateful and I think in our small way, this is another way of saying thank you to them, to our veterans who have protected us and have given their all. And I just hope as we move down the road uh, as we hear more and more veterans coming home facing problems that may be homeless, that we continue to have facilities like this, not just across Norwalk, but across the state and across the country. There is no doubt we owe them so much. So once again, thank you for all the efforts uh, to the Keeners and everyone. And a little special thought to my good friend Paul Jones who's probably looking down right now saying, finally. <laughs> <laughs> so God bless you all. Thank you for your work.